Okay. Dear Dean of the Faculty of Social Sciences, dear Director General of the Austrian Ministry of Science, dear President of the International and of the Austrian Sociological Association, dear ISA representatives, dear organizers, dear colleagues, welcome to the third Forum of Sociology of the International Sociological Association. We are very happy to welcome 5,000 sociologists coming from 126 countries. <laughs> we are happy to have you as our guests in Vienna. Vienna is Austria's largest city and has repeatedly been evaluated as one of the most livable cities in the world. And all conference venues are located near the historic center of the city, which was designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Our university is the oldest in the German-speaking world and celebrated its 650th anniversary last year. This opening ceremony is the official start for the third forum of sociology entitled The Futures We Want, Global Sociology and the Struggles for a Better World. My name is Ulrike Zadler. I am a member of the local organizing committee and the deputy head of department of the Department of Sociology at the University of Vienna. It is my great pleasure to guide you through today's program. We will start with this opening ceremony with music at the end. Then after a short break, the first opening plenary session will start at 5.45 in this room. And immediately after the opening plenary, the opening reception will start at 7.30 in the arcaded courtyard, also in this building. As it is always the case for major events like this one, many persons contributed significantly to this forum. And I would like to welcome as our first speaker, the host of the University of Vienna, Professor Ulrike Feld, the Dean of the Faculty of Social Sciences, who was very supportive in the preparation of the ISA forum and who provided the infrastructure for this event. Good afternoon. Thank you for being here with us in this wonderful afternoon and not for visiting this wonderful city. Well, you should be in here, so, okay. It is an honor and a pleasure for me to welcome you in this main auditorium and to those watching at the other places outside to the third ESA Forum. I would like to transmit also my warm welcome from our rector, Professor Heinz Engel, who unfortunately cannot be here today because of other commitments. He wishes all the best for a successful meeting. It's actually a very good feeling when you walk through this university building in summertime and you see so many buildings, and just so many people, sorry, and not so many buildings. <laughs> I did it. Several thousand sociologists is nothing to be afraid of. It's really great to see you all here. 126 countries I learned and to have come here to share their thoughts, engage in debate and struggle over how we can analyze and get a grip on the multiple challenges contemporary societies are confronted with. Professor Richter, the former Dean of our faculty, has been a key person in bringing you all here to Vienna and many of the colleagues and students of the Department of Sociology have devoted considerable energy and careful thoughts to make this event happen in the best possible way. My thanks as a Dean goes also to them. Let me shortly share some information about the Faculty of Social Sciences, which I have the privilege to care for as a Dean. It is a rather large faculty covering major fields in the social sciences, such as sociology, communication sciences, cultural and social anthropology, and political science, as well as two smaller fields, science and technology studies, to which I count myself, and uh, nursing studies. 
Over the past decade, our faculty has undergone a process of important transformation. A lot of new faculty members have joined, new research faculty emerged to address pressing issues of our time. Our international orientation has even been strengthened, and we succeeded in integrating many young scholars through our research projects. We host about 13,000 students in four BA programs, seven MA programs, and six PhD specializations. In short, it's a great and lively environment, which we are very proud of, and I'm sure we will share some of it with you while you stay here with us the next couple of days. Evidently, evidently as already said, the faculty is young compared to the university, which is 650 years or was 650 years old last year. While this was a year long of series of very interesting events, projects and commemorations, there is one element I would highlight, I would like to highlight here. Um, in this context, special attention was drawn to the so-called Akadenhof, where you will have tonight um, the gathering in the university's main building, so the central square in the, court, in, in the core of the building. There, the institution proudly presents, in a quite pompous manner, admittedly, no less than 154 so-called busts. 153, you might not be astonished, are men, or we could say uh, specimens of white male scientists, <laughs> which have definitely contributed to this institution and left their traces, yet and, and well beyond. However, this year also gave us, made us reflexive about the lack of women represented in this institution and their work, and therefore last week, seven new representation, artistic representations of women who contributed to this university were proudly presented to the public. One woman found her way in this club, who is well known, is a well-known figure in sociology, Maria Yahuda. She had earned her PhD in psychology from the university in 1933 and became well known for a classic study on the social impact of unemployment on a small community. As was the case with many outstanding intellectuals, she was forced to leave Austria for her political convictions in 1936. If you have time, in breaks or the tonight, have a look at these representations. Let me end by stressing that one of the debates we very often have in our faculty, it gravitates around issues that we as social scientists should not only excel in research on the international level, which has by now become the standard, but also try to impact the world we live in. Thus, we also have to engage with issues on the local level, and we have wonderful collaborative ties to the city and other actors in a broad variety of ways. We hope to be able to contribute with our knowledge and know-how, our insights, engagements, and analytic capacities to the very development of the place we are part of. Therefore, I congratulate you for the title and the topic of your meeting, The Future We Want, Global Sociology and the Struggles for a Better World. A short glimpse at the program allowed me to see how manifold this topic has been addressed. Yet, I was asking myself who the we is and who will be those that participate in this better world. Many great sociological minds from so many places around the world have gathered here in Vienna. The forum will be an important point of integration across generations, across questions, across careers, across fields. Some 200 volunteers are around to help you to make this event a good memory. So let me close by thanking all those who have made the event possible for their engagement and hard work, for their vision and for the energy to follow them up and for making this event happen, and to you for being here. Let me extend once more my welcome to all of you. I'm convinced this will be a memorable moment of reflection, exchange and engagement, and maybe some outings to this nice city she mentioned is so worthwhile living in. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ulrike Feld. There are still some places left here. Maybe if some of you want to come to the front rows, you could 
try to get a place over there. Don't be too shy, maybe. The next welcome address will be given by Barbara Weizgruber, Director General of the Austrian Ministry of Science. She provided very generous sponsoring and support and is one of the most important cooperation partners for this conference. Thank you for coming. Dear President, dear Vice President, dear Dean, distinguished guests, dear conference participants, it's actually uh, the Austrian taxpayer who is to thank for uh, because it's public support. But it is an honor and a pleasure for me to welcome you all on behalf of the Austrian Vice Chancellor and Minister for Science, Research and Economy, Dr. Reinhold Mitterlehner. And I'm very glad that it's me who is able to be on this podium. And we can see women were not that uh, present um, some time ago, but today at least some part of science is in women's hands. <laughs> The title of the conference, The Futures We Want, Global Sociology and the Struggles for a Better World, reflects well the urgent need to find solutions to the grand challenges the world is facing. Challenges such as migration, refugee crises, climate change, scarce natural resources, healthy aging, just to mention a few of them. For a small country like Austria, knowledge capital and international cooperation are vital. Therefore, we strongly invest in our future to be among Europe's most innovative countries. With over 3% of our gross domestic product spent for research and development, Austria already ranks third in the European Union behind Finland and Sweden. And Austria's research is highly competitive and internationalized. If we look at one of the most important output indicators, the internationally co-authored papers, we see our research institutions and universities among the world's leading ones. And we are also proud that our researchers are very successful in the EU research framework program Horizon 2020, where we have a success rate well above the EU average. And so it is also for ERC grants, the European Research Council, our institutions are very successful Actually, they rank fifth of 33 countries applying for European research grants regarding the success rate. And of course, um, we want to further strengthen our participation in the European research area, especially in European infrastructure projects. Austria is already a member of a number of pan-European social scientific infrastructure projects. The European Social Survey, a representative social survey operating in more than 25 European countries, the Survey of Health, Aging and Retirement in Europe, an international long-term panel study aiming to examine the quality of life, health, employment bi biography, and also pensions of people older than 50 years. And the Consortium of European Social Science Data Archives, the umbrella organization of the European Social Science Data Archives, which contains the respective national data of social science surveys. The installation of a national socio-scientific data archive has recently been initiated in Austria. Actually, it is the University of Vienna in cooperation with the universities of Graz and Linz leading this organization. And I would like to join you to learn more about our data archive on July 14th at 2 p.m. when Sylvia Gritzinger will talk about the project at the publisher's launch at this conference. Austria is also a member of the joint program initiative More Years, Better Lives. The aim of this initiative is to explore and understand demographic change through a cross-disciplinary approach and to align national and regional funding programs and activities as well as public engagement. Our ministry also provides funding for the UN-affiliated European Center for Social Welfare Policy and Research located in Vienna. And we are very proud that in June this year, the European Commission launched a new in-house virtual center dedicated to migration and demography, the so-called Knowledge Center for Migration and Demography. The first partnership of the Knowledge Center for Migration and Demography was established with the International Institute for Applied System Analysis, YASA, which is located in Luxembourg, not far from Vienna. The European Commission, the Joint Research Center, and YASA 
Expertise on Population and Migration Center is led by Professor Wolfgang Lutz, who is actually on the list of participants, but I've not seen him yet, but I'm sure he will join us. And the center will provide multidimensional assessments for future population trends in Europe, as well as in the main regions of origin of migration into Europe. We are all aware of the fact that the grand societal challenges cannot be solved by any one country, actually by any one continent alone, and who will only be successful through multidisciplinary cooperation with social sciences and humanities being an integral part in this research collaboration. Your organization aiming at advancing sociological knowledge throughout the world and securing and developing institutional and personal contacts all across the world, as well as promoting international research and training, can play a vital role in our joint efforts to successfully meet the grand challenges. Let me end by thanking all of you for having come here, for participating in this conference, but a special thanks goes to all of those responsible for the excellent organization of the conference, particularly Professor Rudolf Richter from the Department of Sociology at the University of Vienna, as well as Professor Brigitte Aulenbacher from the Institute of Sociology of Johannes Kepler University, Linz. I wish you all a successful conference, and I hope that you will benefit from the conference academically and professionally, but also personally here in Vienna. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara Weidgruber. Our next speaker is Professor Katharina Scherke, the current president of the Austrian Sociological Association, which was involved in the conference organization and dissemination in the Austrian sociological community. <laughs> Dear colleagues, it's a great honor and pleasure for the Austrian sociological community that this third ISA forum is going to take place here in Vienna. Welcome to all of you. On behalf of the Austrian Sociological Association, I would like to thank not only the representatives of the ISA, but also the local organizing committee, foremost Rudolf Richter and Brigitte Aulenbacher, for bringing the conference to Austria and for all the work and activities in the last months for preparing a successful event. The motto of the forum, Struggle for a Better World, reflects an idea that has attracted sociologists for a long time. From outside the discipline, political authorities, as well as the wider public, often have demanded from sociology to come up with ideas for controlling and developing society in accordance with the aims of social justice, inclusion, and a better life for everyone. However, many sociologists have challenged this request heavily. Just think about Max Weber and the Werturteilstreit, or think about the Frankfurt School, Theodor Adorno, Jürgen Habermas, and others, and their dispute with exponents of critical rationalism. Until today, the question remains open. Shall we, as sociologists, just describe society? Or shall we also strive for a change to the better? And how shall we decide on what is the better? Every generation of sociologists has to find a new answer, taking into account the most pressing societal challenges of their respective time. Under this perspective, the topic of the forum couldn't be more up to date, because currently societies observe entirely new forms of crisis. Societal models of the living together are contested all over the world, not only due to economic and so social alterations, but also because the national environment undergoes fundamental changes. All this influences sociology's attitudes towards the aim of improving societies. I have the impression that the need to take a position as a sociologist with regard to social problems is very urgent at the moment maybe even more urgent than 10 or 15 years ago. Especially in Europe, sociologists are called for solutions. We face deep problems of organizing our societies in regard to migration issues, the future of the European Union, and the dealing with political extremism. Can sociology provide solutions for these issues? Or will we limit ourselves to, to the role of observers only? And, Will societies listen to sociological so solutions at all? 
These are very topical questions, and of course, they are not restricted to Europe alone. Austria and Central Europe is a place where the question of how to develop sociology and society has been discussed for more than 100 years. In the beginning of the 20th century already, theoretical approaches such as phenomenological sociology, think about Alfred Schütz, or conflict theory, think about Ludwig und Blowitsch, were discussed here. Empirical research methods were developed early on in the 1920s and 1930s, for instance, in the so-called Marienthal study by Maria Hoder, Paul Lazarsfeld, and Hans Zeisel. By the way, you will have the opportunity to visit Marienthal, which is in fact a part of the small village uh, Grammat Neusiedl during the forum. The archive for the history of sociology in Austria runs a museum there which documents the history of the village and concurrently the history of empirical social research in regard to unemployment. After the 1930s, the establishment of sociology in Austria was interrupted under the Nazi period and a heavy brain drain occurred. Sociology only recovered during the 1960s as a discipline taught at universities. Nowadays, sociology can be studied at five universities as a major subject and even more offer it on an elective basis. Sociological research is not only performed at the universities but also within different research centers. Currently, the Austrian Sociological Association has at about 500 members and runs 20 sections covering various special fields of sociological interest. I hope all participants will enjoy their stay here in Vienna and Austria and will take interesting insights into this region, into the sociology in this region, and of course on how to arrive at the future we want. A basic challenge for sociology closely connected to its history and a major issue that has provided many starting points for sociological research. I wish you all interesting discussions and a very good time here in Austria. Thank you. Thank you, Katharina Scherke. I now welcome Rudolf Richter, Chair of the Local Organizing Committee. He is Professor at the University of Vienna and was the Dean of the Faculty of Social Sciences for 10 years. Rudolf Richter initiated the application and brought this conference to the University of Vienna. Together with the ISA Executive Committee, he is the one who laid the basis for making this event possible. Dear colleagues and friends, on behalf of the local organizing committee, I welcome to the ISA forum with 5,000 of us sociologists in 700 sessions. When I presented the ISA Forum in Vienna two years ago in Yokohama, a friend of mine came to me, he's not in this room, but probably outside at the public viewing, uh, and said to me, Rudolf, you are organizing the ISA Forum in Vienna 2016? So far I thought you were a reasonable man. <laughs> Was I reasonable to organize the forum well, I think sociology is about organization of society and communication within society. And so I think to organize a conference like this is a matter of applied sociology. Just to give you a glimpse of the network and institutions engaged in this, I want to thank the institutions and persons uh, involved. Applause at the end of the talk, because otherwise we would stay there till midnight. <laughs> First of all, thanks the ISA for letting us prepare this forum, the members of the forum, FORMA and the acting RCC. They were very supportive, understood our concerns, supported us in our procedures. Thanks to Markus Schulz, the vice president of ISA and forum president. He set the theme and invited those honorable guests for the opening and the closing plenary. Special thanks go to the Secretariat in Madrid, to Isabella Balinska, who always stayed relaxed, even in very few unrelaxing 
situations and brought her experience in from a lot of world conferences. The Vice President of Finance and Membership had a strong look at the budget. Thank you, Benjamin is there, uh, for taking this. I especially enjoyed cooperating with the President of the ISA, Margaret Abraham. Not only was she involved in the overall communications within the preparation, uh, discussed the planning of the whole conference, and uh, we didn't know each other before, but I think we really got friends in this process. Thank you very much. The forum, according to ISA, should take place at the universities, thus giving a more or less familiar touch to the scientists as we originally calculated up to 3,000 participants maximum uh, at the university. The university accepted to host 5,000. We have now so many thanks to the University of Vienna and all these people responsible uh, for the organization and allowing us and structuring this conference. To name just a few, the Faculty of Social Sciences and the Department of Sociology uh, gave us the premises and the infrastructure to work there. Thank you uh, very much. The event management and the room and resources management uh, worked intensively in the logistics and in the resources of all the equipment of the uh, lecture rooms. I just want to thank a few Falk Pastner, Gary Schneider, he's here somewhere, I saw him before, Nicholas Ortner, Margarete Jurenic, and especially Florian Krug. He cared for the rooms, for the equipment, for the tables, for the charts, for the maps, and so on, and so on. Thank you very much, those people from the University of Vienna. Let me again thank the Ministry of Sciences for the generous support, thus so showing also the international perspective and the international openness of the representatives of the Austrian taxpayers. My thanks go to the local organizing committee consisting of representatives of various sociological institutes within and outside the universities, that the support and engagement for the theme of the conference appears best in the lunch plenaries, and I hope you have the chance to visit the three plenaries at lunchtime in the next three days. My special thanks in this way uh, go to the Vice Chair of the Local Organizing Committee, Brigitte Auenbacher. Without her help and the help also of her colleagues at the University of Linz, um, the forum would look less vividly. She initiated our lunchtime plenaries, was engaged in the book exhibition, and I think I visited hardly a world conference which has so many exhibitors. She made the cooperation with the European Commission possible and much, much more. Thanks a lot. I would like to extend my thanks to the uh, up to 200 volunteers looking for the rooms, caring for the rear directions. Thanks especially to the Student Organizing Committee, where there were leaders and about 20 students which worked in five working groups. Just to give you a few details, um, a few issues they dealt with. They recruited the volunteers, they organized the social program tours, and I hope you have chance to attend them. We had a media group, and the, they are in contact with the traditional and with new media. We have a Twitter account. Uh, we have a resources group, and they designed these blue T-shirts. Uh, we have, and they designed the water bottles uh, you have in your luggage. We have an info desk group, which uh, will be present at the different locations for your service. Thanks to the students. I always say we can imagine universities without professors but professors would, be no, uh, make, would make no sense without students, so it's very important. <laughs> Finally, uh, let me thank my office at the Department of Sociology. First, Anna Quince, she joined our team uh, in March and coordinated the volunteers, dealt with the 
Clark took care of uh, roughly 2,000 visa applications, uh, which were successful. We had three complaints in some kind. Uh, and managed to get coffee for the book lounge, which is very important. She was working around the clock last week. Thank you very much. And last, uh, but definitely not least, um, on the contrary, I think the most important person of uh, the conference was the administrative coordinator, Ida Seljuskak. Uh, I would like to thank her for the last two years in coordinating communicating with all the persons and institutions and organizations involved and especially everyone who has registered for the farewell party uh, will appreciate uh, her work. By the way, if you have not already signed up for the farewell party, you can do so until Monday and buy tickets at the conflicts desk. Um, Ida is a very self-reliant person and I was always struck by her having the nerves and staying cool through the whole preparation. Much cool that I would ever have been. Um, both are young, and I know they don't like it at all, but I told them there are things you can't avoid in life. So I would like to please show your faces. <laughs> <laughs> This is in the street. This is us. <laughs> Finally, I was thinking. Uh, was I reasonable in organizing this forum? Well, I don't know, but uh, if you have any doubts with such a support, I can assure you I would do it again for a better world. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Rudolf Richter. We are pleased to now welcome two representatives of the International Sociological Association. Professor Patricia Albanese is a past president of the Canadian Sociological Association and she is the head of the local organizing committee for the 2018 ISA World Congress of Sociology in Toronto, Canada. She will give us a short overview on this upcoming event. Thank you, Patricia. Good afternoon. My name is Patricia Albanese. I'm chair of the local organizing committee for the 19th ISA World Congress being held in Canada in 2018. I'd like to begin by thanking our gracious hosts uh, here in Vienna. The bar is being set higher and higher and higher with each passing World Congress and World Forum. I'm pleased to say that we're well on our way with organizing the 2018 ISA World Congress at the Metro Toronto Convention Centre on traditional territory of the Mississauga Anishinaabe Ojibwe First Nation. As uh, many of you may have seen on the ISA website and newsletters, ISA President Margaret Abraham has selected an important and intellectually stimulating and moving theme, a call to action for our next ISA World Congress, Power, Violence and Justice, reflections, responses, and responsibilities. Given the state of the world today, nothing seems more fitting. As chair of the local, I, um, I want to begin by sharing how wonderful it's been working closely with Margaret, the ISA Secretariat, and members of the ISA Executive. Maggie, Isabella, and the LOC have been working collaboratively from day one, communicating regularly with each other and with the local conference organizing company that we've hired, JPDL. We're also working closely with Tourism Toronto and the Metro Toronto Convention Centre to think creatively about how best to accommodate this large and growing international event. We anticipate that the spirit of openness, hard work, collaboration, inclusiveness, compromise and collegiality will spill into and be reflected in all aspects of the ISA World Congress well beyond July 2018. 
We're working with a team of um, hardworking, passionate colleagues representing regions, sociology departments, ideas and approaches from right across Canada that make up our local organizing committee. This dynamic and diverse team has been working on the uh, 2018 ISA World Congress logo, on seeking sponsorship and support, and on sharing creative ideas and, and, and information to help make the ISA World Congress a success. Others who have provided ongoing support are some of the past presidents of the Canadian Sociological Association, some of whom are in the audience today as active members of the ISA. Others still among you are Canadian sociologists who do much for and in CSA and ISA and will surely play other key roles in, uh, as the organizing unfolds. And I thank you in advance. I'll come knocking on your doors. <laughs> Some of these people will help play a role in identifying and showcasing key themes in Canadian sociology in the 2018 I ISA World Congress and in profiling major research partnerships with what many of you are international colleagues. Canadian sociologists are excited to share with you what they do and how they do it. We enthusiastically await to hear more about your research, approaches, theorizing, and activism. As you know, there are many opportunities to exchange ideas and insight through regular sessions and a wide range of special sessions that make up our expansive conference program. Please be sure to check the ISA website and with your RCs and national associations this fall and winter for more details on, opportunity, on uh, opportunities on how to uh, become more engaged and how to participate in the event. Together we'll build on past successes and the legacy of Yokohama. Uh, the ISA World Congress 2018 offers many opportunities to reconnect with brilliant and inspiring colleagues and build networks and new pathways into future projects and creative approaches to tackling our many um, ongoing and emerging social issues. Our venue, the Metro Toronto Convention Centre, is located at the very heart of the city and is now even more accessible than ever thanks to a newly built Union Pearson public transit route directly to Toronto's Pearson Airport, which is a major research, a major uh, uh, travel hub uh, that many of you will be coming through. As you plan your travels to Toronto, be sure to keep track of dates and deadlines particularly related to travel visas. We'll do our best to remind you and to assist you with them, but as you know all too well, given the state of global affairs, um, applying for and, and getting a visa is very much more time consuming than crafting a brilliant paper to present at those conferences. <laughs> But once you're here, there, um, you'll find that Toronto is a safe city, a walking city, and a relatively, a, a, with a relatively affordable, easy to navigate, reliable public transit. Our venue, the Metro Toronto Convention Centre, is located steps from major attractions for you and your family. Uh, you have the CN Tower, Major League Baseball, and a large aquarium just steps from the menu. Uh, the menu. <laughs> I'm already hungry. The venue. <laughs> And this is why I'm hungry, because when uh, you're not in sessions, uh, you can walk uh, with your colleagues, your friends, your family through many local markets, street festivals, ethnic neighborhoods, parks, all in abundance in Toronto in the summer months. After you're there and intellectually charged, some of you may want to uh, venture a little further afield to Niagara Falls or the Niagara region and beyond. We'll consider the 2018 World Congress a success if you walk away filled with new ideas, with larger and stronger and more stimulating social networks, with fond memories and newly fueled drive to continue the brilliant work that you do. We can't wait to see you in Toronto in 2018, but until then, come visit us at our booth here at the Expo. Thank you. Thank you, Patricia Albanese. It is now a great pleasure to welcome an ISA official who is outstanding among the persons who supported this meeting, Professor Margaret Abraham, the current president of the International Sociological Association. We are very happy to have you with us today. May I ask you to give your official ISA presidential address?
Before I start, let me say, Patricia, that's good about menus. I like the idea that we think about food. It's important. Thank you, Professor Zartler. Distinguished guests, colleagues, and friends, on behalf of the International Sociological Association, it is my distinct pleasure to welcome you to the third ISA Forum of Sociology in Vienna. The ISA Forum is designed as a mechanism for the research committees, thematic and working groups to hold their interim meetings between the ISA Congresses. The strength of this forum owes much to the stellar role played by the participating ISA research committees, the thematic and working groups in developing a well-crafted scientific program. Credit also goes to ISA Vice President for Research and the Forum President, Marcus Schulz, and the ISA Research Coordinating Committee. Our very special thanks to Rudolf Richter, Chair of the Local Organizing Committee, together with Brigitte Ollenbacher, Vice Chair of the LOC, and Ida Selyes-Kug, and yes, I pronounced that correctly. <laughs> Uh, and the members of the LOC for their meticulous planning and preparation. As always, the ISA Secretariat team in Madrid, led by ISA Executive Secretary Isabella Barlinska, has been crucial in all stages of the preparation of this forum. Last but not least, to the distinguished panel, but my thanks and deep appreciation to Rector Heinz Engel, Dean Ulrike Feld, and the University of Vienna for providing such a beautiful and wonderful venue. To all the supporters and all the people who work backstage, thank you, and to the sponsors, thank you for, for making this major event possible. The third ISA Forum in Vienna, with its theme, The Futures We Want, Global sociology and the struggles for a better world is particularly timely given the current state of our world and the challenges, competing assumptions, frustrations and aspirations about futures by individuals, communities, institutions, states and movements. The third ISA forum is happening at a time when there is considerable turmoil, conflict, and humanitarian disaster across the world. Within the space of six days, between June 27th and July 3rd, there have been three deadly attacks in Istanbul, in Dhaka, and in Baghdad, underlining terror's global presence. Additionally, there is state-sponsored terrorism to contend with. It is also particularly pertinent that this forum is being held in Vienna, Austria, at a time when the European Union has been undergoing its own major political crisis, resulted in fragmented responses to the migrant, refugee, and global humanitarian crisis. In the past year, we have witnessed vast numbers of people forced to leave their homes due to war, poverty, conflict, and destruction. According to the UNHCR, and I quote, war and persecution have driven more people from their homes than at any time since records began, with over 65 million men, women, and children now displaced worldwide, end quote. The current number of displaced people globally is the highest since the aftermath of World War II. In the last year, we have witnessed the dislocation of individuals, families, and children. The power of governments to, in Europe to shut borders while people bravely make life-threatening journeys across land and sea in search of safety and the possibility of a better future. We have also witnessed private individuals, informal groups and organizations 
at the local, national, and transnational levels, bravely helping and mobilizing for social justice and the well-being of all. Over the past decades, we have been seeing a growing anti-immigrant backlash. We see the rapid growing clout of right-wing groups, closing of borders, and an increased overt othering. There is the ongoing buildup of fear of foreigners as untrustworthy, scaping, scapegoating those displaced as appropriators of the limited resources. A few weeks ago, Britain voted to leave the European Union with subsequent reactions and repercussions of Brexit for the UK, EU, and the world. Significantly, in the US, a country built on immigration, the Republican presidential candidate has repeatedly engaged in immigrant bashing, even called for a, a total ban of Muslims from entering the United States. In Austria, across Europe, United States, in Asia, including India, and in many parts of the world, we are witnessing the rise of right-wing parties with their incendiary rhetoric, intensifying nationalism that is increasingly anti-immigrant and anti-Muslim, fragmenting the fabric of society. We see the rise of xenophobia, Islamophobia, and the racist discourses as right-wing politicians promote the politics of exclusion, tapping into the fears and frustrations of segments of, of society by strategically scapegoating immigrants and refugees as stymieing the aspirations and opportunities of citizens for a better future. Yet, at the other end of the spectrum, there are many, and increasingly so, voices of those who contend that the futures we want entail seeking solutions that enable a shared humanity that transcends boundaries, that recognizes that every human being matters and has the right to equality and fundamental liberties, to security and dignity. In these troubled times, what can the ISA, the International Sociological Association, do to contribute to the debates and dialogues on the futures we want, on global sociology and the struggles for a better world? In the context of the ISA, we will do well to recall the genesis of the organization and its raison d'etre. In documenting the history of the International Sociological Association from 1948 to 1997, author Jennifer Platt, former Vice President of Publications, explains that ISA, founded in 1949 against the backdrop of the post-World War II, was part of a UNESCO initiative, and I quote, to promote research in the fields crucial to the establishment of a peaceful world order. The ISA mandate was not just to purely serve intellectual and cultural functions, but importantly, for promoting democracy and serving broad social purposes. Interestingly, at the meeting in 1948, to discuss the establishment of the ISA, the first heading of the statement of functions was, and I quote, promotion of sociology as science and action. The encouragement in all countries of sociological study, teaching, and research, with emphasis upon the scientific character and the practical contribution of sociology, I end quote. Clearly, the founders envisaged a future in which the organization would grapple with the problems of our world and be proactive in pointing new directions for progressive change? It is my hope and expectation that the sociological knowledge and insights from the third ISA forum will help us delve into the complexities and challenges of our world and offer insights into the futures we want. From its inception, the ISA has been predicated on the belief that sociology matters 
and that sociology, sociologists can play a transformational role in creating a just society. As mentioned earlier, a primary mission of the ISA is to actively address important issues of our human social world and thereby contribute to true democracy and, the, and a better, just society. As C. Wright Mills points out, and I quote, it is by means of the sociological imagination that men, and if he were here today, would say humans or women, would would hope to grasp what is going on in the world and to understand what is happening in themselves as minute points of the intersections of biography and history within society. Given that sociologists' deep understanding of society, knowledge of theoretical and conceptual frameworks, and a commitment to methodological rigor, we are eminently suited for the task of engaging with the public on matters that affect people's lives and futures. It is therefore appropriate that the sociological perspe perspective be available to civil society when it can actually make the difference in terms of meaningful action, influence policy, and even be the game changer in our search for a more just world and envisioning the futures we want. Today, amidst the political and social upheavals of our time, sociological silence is tantamount to being indifferent, and if I may say, even complicit in injustice. There can be little doubt that public opinion, the main mineral resource influencing public policy and governmental action in most democratic societies is to a large extent molded by the media and essentially by social media, television, newspapers in all parts of the world, be it the global north or south. These sources of mass information and communication, which also sadly are used as propaganda tools, feature debates, analysis, comments on the leading issues and flashpoints confronting the world. Significantly, through these tools, the lay person is exposed to the opinions, critiques, and views of politicians, policy makers, economists, political scientists, et al., on varied, to varied topics of contemporary relevance that impact the future. Ironically, sociologists who actually engage in a comprehensive understanding of our human world who analyze institutions, structures, group behaviors, actions, and happenings from the standpoint of their consequences for civil societies, who offer solutions to a range of critical concerns, are rarely featured as experts in these vital public arenas. While there may be some degree of deliberate political exclusion or receptivity, due to the perception that sociologists tend to hold more radical views, it also behooves us as sociologists to recognize that sociology does not become less serious or insightful for being more accessible. After all, if our job is to study socially relevant matters, we surely need to share our analysis with society's main stakeholders, the public, the past ISA president, Michael Burawai, devoted much of his time to promoting the importance of public sociology. While some debate the necessity or the relevance of the prefix public, especially in parts of the world where sociology has always had a public face, I believe it is becoming increasingly clear that sociological engagement and intervention is necessary at all levels of our society. Feminists and social justice scholars have long engaged with publics for transformative change. If we sociologists as a global community effectively spread and share our scientific knowledge with the broader society of which we are a part, then together we can frame the futures we want. We have an intellectual, moral and social responsibility as sociologists to generate and share knowledge and engage in collective action in building a better world. To do this, however, we will need to develop 
a contextual global sociology and collaborate with other disciplines encountering dangerous discourses that foment violence, xenophobia, Islamophobia, racism, and the spectrum of inequalities and social exclusions across the world. It is toward this goal of increasing the public visibility, accessibility, and effectiveness of sociology and sociological knowledge on the global scene and in the local scene that I have put together as my special presidential project the global mapping of sociologists for a contextual global sociology. To be truly effective, the ISA needs to knit together sociologists across the world in a joint endeavor of mutual cooperation and collaboration. As part of my presidential priorities, ISA has initiated a project that aims to create the first comprehensive global mapping of sociologists for social inclusion and as a resource to identify, connect, and enable global collaborations. Today, as we partake in this forum, we acknowledge that there are many sociologists who are unable to participate here for a spectrum of reasons. The global mapping of sociologists for social inclusion, or GMSSI, is intended to intent identify, connect, and enable global collaborations in sociology, and particularly support sociologists who enable multiple barriers, economic and political, which impede their participation in global exchanges. <coughs> Through GMSSI, we hope to partially counter existing knowledge hierarchies, hierarchies of knowledge production in all our disciplines and associations, and to strengthen dialogue and debate among sociologists across the world. An extremely important part is to facilitate our mission of increasing the visibility of sociologists by compiling a database of sociologists across the world with their areas of expertise that can then help us in strengthening connections and collaborations or be an important resource for sustained interaction with the media on a range of issues. I see this as a critical project that is required of the 21st century global community, our networks, where sociologists can play a pivotal role in global, transnational, and local contexts and exchanges. This will be the first such project of the scope and format that brings us together, sociologists, in one integrated database. We will be able to strengthen the use of social media as sociologists to draw attention to complex contexts and concerns of our world. We have an undeniable responsibility to disseminate ISA's work on contemporary social issues to the wider world, to translate specialized sociological knowledge in ways that the broader publics can relate to and to be inspired by. We will be reaching out to sociologists to participate in GMSSI so that we can truly build a connected global community of sociologists who can help address the deeply problematic issues of our time and collaboratively contour work towards envisioning the futures we want. I would like to take this opportunity to encourage you all to participate in this project, and I say we'll be posting more on this soon. For the next four days, this ISA forum, with its emphasis on the futures, provides a vital platform for us as sociologists to interrogate, debate, and dialogue on what futures we want, as well as build and strengthen a global sociology that can meet the ongoing challenges, contextualize and connect, envision and engage in the struggles for a better world. I am indeed glad that the theme of this forum reflects optimism that we can work together for creating a better future 
Thank you and welcome once again. Thank you very much, Margaret Abraham. You were our last speaker in this opening ceremony. Let me give you a short overview on our next program points. Right now, you will have the pleasure to listen to the OIT Schrammel Quartet. For those of you who wonder what that might be, it is a very typical, traditional Viennese music style, which originates from the late 19th century and is named after the composer brothers Johann and Josef Schrammel, a typical Schrammel music ensemble, which you see over there, consists of two violins or fiddles, a double-necked contra guitar and a G clarinet, often also a buttoned accordion. At 5.45 after the music performance, we have a short break, or, or at 5.30, uh, we have a short break of 15 minutes, and then at 5.45, the first opening plenary session starts, entitled Global Sociology and the Struggles for a Better World, which is hosted by the ISA Vice President for Research, Markus Schulz. The opening plenary will take place in this room. Immediately after the plenary, the opening reception will start at 7.30 in the beautiful arcaded courtyard in this building. At the end of this opening ceremony, I would like to thank all those who made the ISA Forum possible. I would like to thank you again for coming and wish the conference a successful, inspiring and productive course. Let's hope that the ISA Forum in Vienna will inspire us to continue to struggle for a better world. And now enjoy the music performance of the OIT Schrammel Quartet. Thanks a lot. Uh, 
the composer uh, uh, Johann Strauss was member of the uh, Strauss dynasty, and they have all been great Schrammel music enthusiasts. Uh, as we have heard already, the traditional Viennese music style is named after the composer brothers Johann and Josef Schrammel. The following piece that is composed by the younger brother, Josef, is called Viennese Heurigen Dances. Heuriger, what actually means this year's wine, is the name given to Eastern Austrian wine taverns in which local winemakers serve the most recent year's wine. They are renowned for their atmosphere of Gemütlichkeit, uh, something like good mood, <laughs> at least etymologically uh, related. <laughs> And uh, this uh, Gemütlichkeit was shared among a throng enjoying young wine, simple food, and traditional music. Thanks a lot. The next instrumental originally is a, fam is a famous, very famous Wiener Lied, so a traditional Viennese song. The Wiener Lied is always centered on the theme of life in Vienna. The song's title is Die Reblaus. It's, uh, it's referring to an almost microscopic pale yellow sap-sucking insect uh, that feeds on the roots and leaves of grapevines. In a word, it's referring to a worldwide past. The song is about a man's passion for sitting at a quiet place in a wine tavern, doing that for many hours and drinking wine all the time. His love for wine is so great that even when he was a child, he already preferred wine to mother's milk. <laughs> the only plausible explanation for his passion, as is stated in the lyric, 
can, of course, only be that in his previous life, he must have been one of these sap-sucking insects. He must have been a reblouse. The following one uh, is one of the classical uh, repertoire's most famous waltzes. Uh, it's penned by the so-called Waltz King. Although this great speed of Viennese music is well known for several Ho Hollywood productions, uh, the honorary title Waltz King is not referring uh, to the Austrian actor Christoph Waltz. Uh, the Waltz King is no less a figure than Johann Strauss, Jr., son of Johann Strauss, Senior, the guy we already have made contact with as uh, the composer of the Kreuzer Polka, what we played in the beginning. The waltz we're talking about is called Frühlingsstimmen, which is to say Voices of Spring. Thank you. 
So, yeah, as uh, one or the other might have recognized, there are different versions of this <laughs> composition. Uh, thanks. The, the long history of uh, multi-ethnic immigration uh, to Vienna has left its traces here, and it has produced the typical Viennese melange. We also call uh, uh, coffee with milk a melange, actually. The Chardash, for example, was originated in Hungary. And it was uh, popularized by uh, Roma people in neighboring lands. And it made substantial contributions to traditional Viennese music. With its striving for a melancholy, crying, but melodious sound. Romani music also strongly influenced traditional klezmer music, which is the musical tradition of the Ashkenazi Jews of Eastern Europe. Klezmer music has always been a part of Austria, especially Vienna, and one of the main klezmer dance forms is the so-called Bulgar, which means nothing more than Bulgarian. The next piece is written by Ukrainian composer Hari Kandel, and it's called Bulgar Odessa.